Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to share some bodyguard romances with y'all. I'm very excited to share these 10 recommendations with you. I've kind of separated them into categories. So first we have contemporary romances, then we have fantasy romances or one fantasy romance, kind of. Um, and then I have historicals and then some alien ones too. The first one that I would love to mention is Royally Endowed by Emma Chase. This is the third book in her Royally series. I think you could read this one as a standalone, but you probably would get the most out of it if you read the previous two books in the series. This is a companion romance series. So the first two books are back here. You have Royally Screwed and Royally uh, Match. The heroine of this book is actually the younger sister to the heroine from book one. And if you've read book one or know of it, essentially it's about a American woman um, falling in love with a, a prince from another country. So this is her sister. And so she's essentially like royalty now um, because her sister married a royal and so she needs a bodyguard. And so our heroine here has been her bodyguard and the prince's bodyguard before that for quite a long time. And he is significantly older than her and it is their romance. And he feels very wrong about this. He's like, I'm falling in love with this woman who's way younger than me. I knew her when she was a teenager and I'm tasked to protect her life. Like this is wrong. And she's like, no, it's not. I'm in love with you. <laughs> I love this series so much and I will never ever ever shut up about it because they're just so good. And I feel like this one's also like an underrated one in this series. I feel like a lot of people either read book one to book two and then stop. But book three is amazing as well. Speaking of Emma Chase, we have kind of like a spinoff to the Royally series called The Bodyguards series. She's only written one book in the series. It's called Dirty Charmer. Also excuse the bone chewing you hear. Ollie is chewing a Nyla bone while I am filming. And yeah. <laughs> Abby is our heroine in here and she lives in West Coast. So this country, this made up country. And she is uh, on her way to being like a very famous and prolific doctor. And then by some means, her family I think has hired a bodyguard for her. Um, and that is Tommy. Tommy and a few of his friends co-own this bodyguard business. And he is tasked to like take care of her and watch over her. Um, and then they end up falling in love. This one was really interesting because it was one of the first like prickly grumpy heroine books that I ever read. Abby is definitely prickly and grumpy and takes things very seriously, everything very seriously. And so Tommy's there to kind of like show her how to have fun and to let loose a little. So I really enjoyed that. I then have The Protector by Jodi Ellen Malpass. Camille is our heroine in here and she has lived like a privileged but also rough life. She is the daughter to a very famous and wealthy businessman and she has been in the limelight for quite a while and she just wants to live like a free life away from her father's fame. Um, and so she's gotten into some bad things in the past. Um, like I believe she got into drugs and she just got out of rehab um, and she's ready to like live an independent life away from all of that stuff. But then Camille's dad um, apparently gets into something shady and they try and take it out on Camille, like retaliate and hurt Camille to hurt her dad. And so then Jake comes into the picture who is tasked to be her bodyguard hired by her father. And so when Jack and Camille meet, there's this big animosity between the two, okay? Camille doesn't want a bodyguard, okay? She doesn't. She thinks that like Jake is gonna be this giant babysitter for her. And she's like, I'm not for this. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna enjoy spending time with you. And then Jack, is very upset about the whole situation because he's very attracted to Camille. And the last time he was attracted to and felt things for one of his, the people he was guarding, something really bad happened. And so he vowed to never ever fall for a client ever again. Um, but obviously the two spend more time together and they end up breaking their preconceived notions and falling in love. I read this one quite a while ago, but it's still stuck in my brain. And I think this is a really good bodyguard romance. Next is of course, Broken Vow by Sophie Lark, one of my favorite books of this year. This is, I believe, book five. I think it's five in the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark. This is a mafia romance series. Riona in here is a lawyer and she's also a daughter to the, the I think it's the Irish mafia boss. I'm not sure. Um, it's either the Italian or the Irish. I can't recall. Anyway, um, I think it's Irish because she has red hair. Prove me wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong, please. One day when she's at her apartment swimming laps in the pool, someone tries to drown her. 
Um, she can't figure out who it is. And this person keeps coming back to try and kill her. And she doesn't know why. She doesn't know who it is. She doesn't know what's going on. And so then Raylan, who you've met in one of the previous books in the series, comes into the picture to be her bodyguard and to protect her from the person who's out to kill her. This is one of my favorite grumpy sunshine romances ever. Riona is the grump and Raylan is the sunshine. He's a sweet cowboy hero who just wants Riona so freaking badly and he's not afraid to show it. I love when men do that. They're not afraid to show how much they want a woman respectfully, respectfully. <laughs> this is one of my favorite books of the year. Okay, it's so good. Riona and Raylan and their connection and the way that they fall in love with each other is honestly beautiful. The last contemporary one I have to mention is Misadventures of the First Daughter by Meredith Wilde and Mia Michelle. This is a romance between Charlotte and Zane. Charlotte is the daughter to the President of the United States and Zane is one of her bodyguards that she has and the two of them become like friends they spend time together because he's there to guard her and then they end up falling in love and they're having to keep their relationship a secret because her dad would not be happy with that would not be happy with them being together so there's not much else to that <laughs> honestly it's about a guy falling in love with the president's daughter and he happens to be her bodyguard so one book that i don't know if it's fantasy romance or historical i honestly don't know but it's one of my favorite books of all time honestly it's like my favorite one of my favorite novellas this is king sized by jessica kane i love this one jessica kane normally writes like alpha dominant heroes rex in here is like the opposite and i love him <laughs> so rex in here is the bodyguard to britta britta has just become queen to this land. That's why I don't know if it's fantasy or historical. There's no like magic in here, but it obviously doesn't take place in our time. So yeah, Britta, her parents just passed, the king and queen. And so she uh, has to go to their funeral. And in the same day, she becomes queen of the land. So Britta's in her room at the beginning of this book, crying, really upset because obviously her, her parents just died. Um, and so Rex is one of the many guards like stationed outside of her room to protect her and he's hearing her sob in there and it's like is no one gonna go in there and comfort this woman and no one else steps up and he's like well i'll gladly do it and so he goes in there and basically becomes like a shoulder for her to cry on and britta finally like notices rex and she keeps noticing him after he like helps her in this situation and they become really close and she'll find any excuse to make him only be her guard for the day and so they can like sneak off and do stuff together. Rex is just so sweet. We have a bigger hero who is a little bit more submissive than the heroine and the heroine is innocent like in that way. So like a very interesting dynamic in here. I love this one so much. If you want a good novella, please check this one out. I have two historicals to mention. First is of course, Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is the romance between Lady Phoebe and Captain James Trevelyan. Lady Phoebe in here, I believe she is the sister to a duke? Yes, sister to a duke. And she is also visually impaired. I believe she's fully blind, if I'm not mistaken. In that time period, there was no accessibility for disabled people. So it's kind of difficult for someone um, like Phoebe, who can't see, to get around in society by herself. And all Phoebe wants is to live a normal, independent life, but she can't really do that. And so her brother has hired James who is a war veteran to be her bodyguard and to make sure nothing bad happens to her. Phoebe at first does not like James because she's like, I don't need a babysitter. I don't need to do that. I wanna live on my own. But then once she starts to like get to know James and who he is, she slowly, you get to see the slow progression of her falling in love with him. Now James is smitten from the beginning. So you have a hero who falls first romance in here. And I just love him. This is also an age gap romance. James thinks he's not good enough for Phoebe because he's experienced some um, injuries in the war. He's a disabled hero. He walks with a cane and he's significantly older than Phoebe. And he thinks that he's not good enough for this beautiful, flower of a woman you know and she just shows him how much she wants him she wants him really bad so this one is just so beautiful it's one of my favorite historicals ever i then have nobody's duke by uh scarlet scott ara and clayton were very much in love in their younger years i want to say when they were teens or early 20s i don't remember but they were very much in love but by some means the 
two of them think that the other person betrayed them on the night they were gonna run away and get married together because they're from rivaling families. So the night that they were gonna go run off together and get married, they believe the other person didn't show up and um, they're very hurt by this and think very poorly of the other person. It is years later, Ara has been married, has had a child, and her husband has been murdered. And it turns out the same people who murdered her husband are out to murder her too. And so I think it's Scotland Yard, whoever the police are in this situation has asked Clayton to come, who is a part of the police business. He's like a detective or something um, to come and watch over Ara. I don't think they know about their past relationship, but anyway, he's been hired to protect her from the people who are out to murder her. And so the two of them are forced to reconnect and finally learn about what happened that night all those years ago um, and ultimately fall in love again. This one is such an underrated historical romance. I just love it. If you love Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas, this is definitely for you. This one has more of the bodyguard aspect, you know, he's there to protect her and watch over her and I just adore it. Next are the two alien romances I wanna mention. <laughs> They're both very interesting. <laughs> So first is the first volume of the Virgin Hunt Games by Mel Teshko. So this one is super interesting. <laughs> there are many volumes in this series. I've only read the first one. In the year 2324, um, aliens exist. We know about aliens. Um, and there's something called the Virgin Hunt Games that people can go into to earn money. Okay, so think of kind of like the Hunger Games a little bit, but stay here. Um, and with aliens. <laughs> so um, Melody has been admitted into the Virgin Hunt Games. Essentially, you have a bunch of men in one row, okay? And um, they are the hunters, okay? Each of them get a name picked out of a bowl and those names are correlated with the women in this lineup, okay? Who are the hunted. So for example, one man will pick out a name of one of the women over here, but his job, his task, in this game is to hunt her and bed her. Whereas the women in this situation, whoever pulled their name, their goal is to make sure that man doesn't bed her. And so she gets more money by betting the person who's not hunting her specifically. Um, so it's a very interesting situation. And I don't think there's any essay. I think like it's all like a consensual thing. You know? And so Damon in here is one of the men in the situation. He, immediately when he sees Melody, he's very attracted to her, but he is not in this game to earn money. He's not in the game to do that. He's in the game to actually kill one of the men in the lineup. And that man just so happens to be the man that pulls Melody's name. And so he's like, perfect. I can try and get with this woman while also trying to kill the guy who's hunting her. Um, and so the whole games, the um, Damon and Melody are kind of like hooking up uh, while he's protecting her from the guy he's hunting and other men in the situation. And there's like other people who come into the situation. So, cause you earn more money by getting with as many people as possible. And that can be women too. And so there's a bunch of like, there's a few group things. It's Damon and Melody getting together, but Damon is protecting her throughout the majority of this book. This series is very interesting. I've only read book one, but it had me very intrigued to read the rest of the books. And lastly, it's a doozy of a title. <laughs> so bear with me. This is How My Boring Life Was Completely Derailed and I Was Absolutely Railed by Two Big Blue Alien Dudes from Outer Space by ML Eliza. <laughs> that title, man. Man, that title. <laughs> okay, so basically this is about a human woman being abducted by Earth uh, by an alien king who really wants her. And so the two of them end up having a very fun night together and the king's bodyguard comes and has some fun with them. So it's an MMF alien romance. This was really hot, really steamy, and that's all I can really say about it. There's a language barrier between the heroine and the bodyguard, but not the heroine and the king. So I thought that was super interesting too. And this was, it was really hot and fun and I really enjoyed my read with this. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some bodyguard romance recommendations for you. Please let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to in the comments or if you have any recommendations for me and other viewers out there. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any blue related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.
Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.